everyone and welcome to the Naked Zucchini Knits podcast. My name is Katie and today is Wednesday, December 7th, 2016 and this is episode 49. I'd like to say hello to any new and returning viewers. Thanks so much for joining me whether it's your first time or you're coming back. Um, I am very sorry for the hiatus. It was completely unplanned um, but <clears throat> excuse me um, obviously right after Calgary Fiber Arts Fair we headed to Japan and then I actually took some time off, which was a really good decision. Um, Dallas had extra time off from work, and so I basically I spent it with him. I got some work done uh, for Nekozuki Knits, like washing the fabric, the mass amounts of fabric <laughs> from Japan. But um, other than that, we played some video games, and we watched some movies, and didn't do much else, which was really good. I will chat a little bit more about that in the chatter section of the podcast. Today I do have um, some works in progress and some stash enhancement and then a bunch of chatter and shop news, otherwise not much. Um, so the first thing I'd like to chat about, I have actually started this podcast multiple times so I did actually move this marker, but I've put uh, about a repeat and a half onto my authenticity shawl. Um, this is being knit out of Sweet Fiber Canadian in the Breakwater colorway. The pattern is Authenticity by Soft Sweater, or she's known as Sylvia Bobilvia or Sylvia McFadden. You can find her Soft Sweater though for patterns and on Instagram. But yeah, I am over this pattern. <laughs> I just want the product, and the problem is, is that I am going to have to knit another repeat because this is not big enough at this point because it's supposed to be a big, bulky, wrappy shawl, and I'm just, yeah. I'm stalling now because I'm bored with it. Nothing wrong with the pattern, nice, simple, clear pattern, but I'm done. <laughs> I'm ready to have the shawl and not have to do the knitting. I don't know why. I don't normally get that way. So anyway, the other project that I'm working on are some socks. I'm about a quarter of the way done the second sock, which is fantastic because these are going to be part of a Christmas gift. Um, they are Stitch Please Yarns in their His Father Will Hear About It color. So you should know that reference, or at least the colors. They're Slytherin. And these are being, oh, and sorry, the authenticity is on US 9 5.5 millimeter needles. The socks are being knit on US 1 2.25 millimeter needles. And these are my Chiagus because I love the cable. Really, I am enjoying those. Um, the authenticity actually came with me on the plane. It was a last minute ad um, because I needed something a little bit more engaging than just plain stockinette. I actually didn't get much knitting done other than the plane in Japan because it was such a fast trip and we were busy every day, but yeah, it's good. Um, I'm not reading anything. I haven't finished anything. I The last stuff I finished was what I chatted with you about last time, the Oh, sorry, I was reading Ghost Talkers and, by Mary Robinette Cole and The Lace Reader by Barry Brunonia. Um, I stopped Ghost Talkers because I got into it and there was events that didn't, couldn't change by the end and it just, I don't know, couldn't do it. Nothing wrong with her writing, I love her writing style and everything, but the story itself was just kind of depressing for me right now. Um, then I, The Lace Reader by Barry Brunonia, I am going to pick that back up. The problem was, was it was an interlibrary loan um, to Cochrane and I didn't want to take it with me on the plane. I also wanted to, like it needed to be returned before we got home. So I just returned it and I will make sure that I get it back on exchange or on interlibrary loan later. Um, and then I was, I did start the second book in the Cruel World series by Jennifer Elbin. But it's most, it just feels like there's so much drama in it, and so I've put that down too. <laughs> I've hit that phase again where it's just like I don't want to read anything that I was interested in before. Um, I have picked up, however, <coughs> excuse me, I picked up um, The Fate of the Tearling by Erica Johansson, which is the third in the trilogy of The Tearling. And I've been reading those over the past couple years. I am excited about that one because I want this series to finish. The second book was a lot better than the first. Um, so I'm hoping that the third is even better. And it'll be a really good gym read because it's a soft 
like it's kind of more like a large trade paperback instead of a hardcover so it's got a little bit more flexibility and I picked it up for gym reading so that I go for my run and then I go and finish off my steps. Uh, so that brings me into stash enhancement. Since the last time you heard from me is before Calgary Fiber Arts Fair, I picked up a few things. I was very moderate here compared to when we went to Knit City. Um, although it's still quite a bit, so I'm excited to knit with all of it. And I have some recreated textiles. They're epic. Um, epic yarn is, it's actually, they're the only ones who carried in Canada. So it's, and I got it from recreated textiles. And so I've gotten, um, I got the black, and then I got this set of five half ounce skeins for an on the spice market. And then I realized that I needed six colors actually, and I couldn't decide which two, so I got her to send me a blue and a green as well. I think I'm gonna take out this ivory and use those six colors. I think that looks really good actually. And then I just will split those two up somehow. These three actually need to be split up somehow. Or maybe all in a sequence, and then these could be in a sequence, and that would be very pretty too. Anyway, um, this will be for the On the Spice Market by Melanie Burke. <coughs> when I actually get around to it. I did purchase the pattern, so I can start it anytime I want. Um, I also bought a skein of Flock Fiber in their Princess Tiger Cub colorway. It's an 84% uh, Superwash Merino, 16% Stellina. Trying to get it to focus. Anyway, and the name of the yarn is Princess Tiger Cub. Super pretty, and it's gonna be a shawl. Um, I should have probably bought two skeins, but I do know the ladies, so if I need another, I will chat with them. Super pretty though. Um, so I got that, and then of course I got the fair exclusive colorway, which was Stash Me. And this is their 75% Superwash Extra Fine Merino, 25% Silk, it's a fingering. Uh, 437 yards or 400 meters per 100 grams and this will also probably be a shawl I just haven't decided which one yet then I also got more ancient arts yarns in their Syrah by Moonlight on the 100% superwash BFL this was the skein that I actually got in my first club shipment too but then they had the Ceylon the shawl there um, as one of their samples and I fell in love with it so I'm going to knit uh, I'm going to take the two skeins because that's what you need for the shawl one from my club one from the purchase and knit the Ceylon shawl then I also got my last shipment from them uh, which included a bag some coffee and this skein look at it it's so awesome um, totally not what I would normally choose but I trust Caroline's color sense. She was like, what do you want? And I'm just like, give me something pretty. <laughs> this is one of her new colorways. It's, uh, there's a cowboy in my boot. And that's the main reason that I actually did want this color was because there's a cowboy in my boot, which totally reminds me of Toy Story. And there's a snake in my boot. So I really like those colors too, like this striping in here. I, I think I might want, actually no, I'm going to probably knit one of the patterns I got from the club in this yarn. I think that would look really good. This is Stars Aligned by Barb Brown. I think that in that would look fantastic. So, and I've never knit a pair of lacy socks. So there we go. I like, I'm going to cake that up and cast on pretty soon actually. Once, actually, once the Slytherin socks are done, I'm going to do that. Then the other pattern that came with it is the Orenburg Rhapsody, which is kind of a shawlette. Or at least I'd wear it as a shawlette, although you would be able to wear it around your shoulders as well. And that will be made. Actually, I think that's what this is going to become. Because, yeah, 400 meters. So that's perfect, actually. So I think that will become this. Because it's a simple uh, shawl. I think the variegated will look really good with it. Actually, she, Caroline had two... Um, samples of it and one of them was in the variegated yarn and it looked really good so I think that's what that's going to become there yarn is actually distributed to patterns that it should become which is awesome so there's those and then 
I didn't buy any yarn in Japan. It was all fabric and souvenirs and a couple things for presents, so I'm not going to show you that. Uh, a few practical things for me, actually, like a schedule book, uh, which I could show you, I guess, but it's somewhere else. And yeah, we didn't really actually bring that much home this time, um, besides gifts. So, let's see, what do I have? Japan was awesome again. Um, we kind of came back and we were like, oh, it's time to go back already. <laughs> I'm super excited that this is something that hopefully can be added more regularly into our travel schedule. I'm really glad Dallas enjoys it. Um, it makes life a lot easier for both of us. Well, not like it makes it easier, but um, it makes me super happy that he's enjoyed it because it will make it easier to go back for both of us. Um, the weather, we went into Kyoto. So we checked the forecast last time in March when we were going and it said that it was going to be in the mid-teens, perfect weather, uh, and sunny. But it was super bitterly cold. Like it was still in that winter, like kind of that grasp of winter until about April. And then April came around and the cherry blossoms bloomed and bang, it was warm. So I, from what I remember of November when I was there on exchange, it was cold and miserable and bitter as well, which was half true for our trip. We actually got down to Osaka and Kyoto and it was around 20 degrees. So we were completely overdressed for the weather. Um, and then we went up to Tokyo and it was bitter and cold and it snowed for the first time in 35 years. So we were super happy that we packed our extra clothing then, but honestly, it was just like down in Osaka and Kyoto and you're just like, oh. so I'll remember that for next year. We'll pack some warm clothes as well as some cold clothes. Um, we were actually there for the earthquake up in Fukushima. Uh, we were not in Fukushima. We were quite a ways south. Uh, we were in Tokyo at that time and you could definitely feel it. Um, super freaky because the hotel we were staying in was uh, 34 stories high and we were on the 33rd floor. So it woke me up and the room was moving a lot. It was moving. Um, Dallas originally thought that it was wind but it turned out to be an earthquake because it was like I'm talking meters of movement just not not just like shaking but like moving. Um, not something I want to experience again. Uh, if I can avoid it, I will be asking for lower floors if we stay at that hotel again. I'm not above that. <laughs> but um, it was an experience to say the least, that's for sure. And we hardly, like, there was hardly anything to the earthquake in Tokyo, to be honest. Um, if we'd been on a gr the ground, we probably wouldn't have felt anything at all, to be honest. I don't know. We might have felt like a bit of a judder. But... Um, yeah, it definitely moved the room a lot. Um, they did shut down all the train lines actually around Tokyo and the Shinkansen lines to check for earthquake damage. So there's de delays. It was a one to two minute delay in Tokyo, which honestly is quite a bit, but um, yeah, uh, it was wild. Um, the funny part of that is if we'd been down in Kyoto or Osaka, we wouldn't have even felt it. So it was only because we we're in Tokyo. Um, yeah, but everything went well. It was actually kind of good that we were up in Tokyo already because if the Shinkansen lines are shut down, then we couldn't have gotten from Osaka and Kyoto up to Tokyo and all of that. Um, and literally we got up, the worst thing is it woke me up. <laughs> so we got up, had breakfast, and then that was the day that we went fabric shopping in Tokyo itself. Everything went fine. A couple minute train delay for us is not a big deal um, considering that that is a significant delay in Japan and I'm used to like 15 to 20 minute delays down in downtown Calgary. Um, very different transit systems. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have weather, earthquake, so much fabric guys. So much fabric. Um, so I went shopping at four different places. Uh, one was minimal amounts of fabric, that's fine, only about, well, Minimal amounts was about 10 meters compared to everywhere else, which was like substantially more. Um, all of the bags coming back were to their limit, except for the backpack because I could not physically fit more into the pack. So basically we took, we had one medium bag for our clothing for the week, which was fine. And then we had three 
checked bags. So an expedition, like a week long expedition pack for Faber. <laughs> so much fun. And then uh, two, another medium one, sorry, another medium suitcase and a big suitcase. So like a big 50 pound suitcase. Wait, no, two 50 pound suitcases, so the big guys. And then an expedition pack. Um, and we filled all of it, plus some. Because uh, Dallas actually did have to put some fabric into his side bag to get on the plane with. So there was a lot of fabric. Uh, it's about 200, it's over 200 meters. And that included the club fabric as well as fabric for the shop in general. Um, basically, what is going to happen now with it is that it's going to be the what's 100% in the shop will be Japanese fabric. At least that's the goal. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, we did, so we did one shop in Kyoto right by the station, Kyoto station, the big one. Um, and then we went, we did a couple of hours in Osaka as well, uh, where we were actually staying. We were staying in Osaka in Shinsaibashi, which was really easy access to this fabric shop. It was fantastic. Um, and then... We went to Toji, uh, which is in Kyoto, and did a shop there for Obi. And then um, we went from there to another shop in Kyoto for fabric, which is about a half hour walk, and the pack was 40 pounds. I packed a little, like I packed a scale and tested it, which actually the scale was a lifesaver. It did actually measure correctly, which was awesome. Um, and that shop always feels very harried, kind of like, um, they don't want to be serving you. So the awesome part about it was, is we actually went in Tokyo to Fabric Town, which I only went into one shop. I wish I could have gone into more, but I, like, we were both done at that point. It was like fabric overload. It was ridiculous. And, uh, awesome but ridiculous because um, you go into these shops and there's just bolts on bolts on bolts and bolts and they're not even really bolts they're actually like rolls of fabric they haven't even been folded in half yet so um yeah uh osaka is really cool for their fabric shop that i go to because it actually has a pneumatic tube system so I've, i think i've told you this before but if you're new then this will be new for you too you go around and you go, I want this one and this one and this one and this one or whatever. And you tell them as you're going around how much you want of each. And then they take a clipping off of it because it's all the uh, floor sample. And they clip a piece to, like they, so they clip a piece, they clip it in half, and then they put one piece on your thing and one piece on their thing and send it up a pneumatic tube up to their cutting floor. It drops down behind the cashier, you pay and you go. Awesome. Uh, the other one in Kyoto, you have to, um, the first one, we picked out bolts. The second one, you have to go around and get someone to pick bolts out for you. So for that, to begin with, is already kind of eh. Um, and then Tokyo, they actually give you carts. So you can go around and pick out your fabrics and put in a cart. And those carts were a lifesaver. It was awesome. Um, yeah, but there was a lot of fabric, and I'm so excited. If you've been watching Instagram, you'll have seen some of it. That is a very small part of what I brought home really like a tiny part I will post more as I get it done right now I'm working on ironing it all which is going to take a while I think I got 38 out of the over 200 meters done last night so super small dent in what I've actually got um, but I'm super excited to show all of you and I hope you guys are excited to see it because it is really awesome um, while we were there we did actually do a couple vacation days because there's a couple things we missed in on the first trip because we had to shift plans around a little bit um, so we went to Nara where the deer are as well as the big massive Buddha the Daibutsu Den so that was really cool to see uh, one of the quieter places that is the one thing I've really noticed from when I was there to now is I think it's a lot busier than it was six years ago so actually seven years ago for Nara um, we also went up to Fushimi Inari, which is where all the Tori gates are, and uh, I did a prayer because it's a business success shrine. And then I went 
with Dallas also, we went uh, to Kiyo Musidera for their light up for the leaves because November is known actually for the momiji turning uh, or the fall leaves. And then we had lots of fantastic food. We had okonomiyaki quite a few times. Uh, okonomiyaki is basically a cabbage with batter in it to kind of hold it together with a few extra things thrown in. It's really good. We get modanyaki which is modern okonomiyaki uh, with noodles on top and then bonito as well. They put like Japanese mayonnaise and a uh, okonomiyaki sauce. It's so good. Um, and then we also had still the best Indian curry I've ever had at New Delhi across from Kansai Gaidai. That was actually one of our stops that we had to do. Um, and even the we had free breakfast at the hotel we stayed at in Osaka and it was really good for like a free breakfast. like. Um, it's like there's eggs and there's fruit and um, onigiri which are the rice balls and inari which are the sushi like fried tofu with uh, rice stuffed into it like um, Canadian free breakfasts have nothing on it <laughs> and then uh, the place in Tokyo was also really good and we knew that from before uh, it is a paid breakfast but it's um, so worth it so, um, that was Japan. Lots of food, lots of fabric, um, quite a bit of travel. Not as much time on trains this time, which was kind of nice. We had uh, Shinkansen Transits, which is the bullet train, uh, and then a little bit on local trains, but mostly we walked, actually, which worked out really well. Uh, Calgary Fiber Arts Fair went really well. Thanks for coming out. Um, as an organizer, I would like to say thank you so much. Our attendance was fantastic. I'm so happy that so many people were able to find us and that they seemed to really enjoy it. As a vendor, thank you so much for coming out and supporting me in my last show of the season. Uh, it's been a really busy year and I really appreciate all of your support. Um, and then that brings me into what we've been doing now. We actually went out to get our Christmas tree. It's set up upstairs and it is ridiculously cold here it's minus 24 plus a wind chill so it is cold um definitely a very big shift from when we were in japan at like plus 20 two weeks ago and well and calgary does that too and cochrane does that as well it's kind of like plus 20 and then minus 20 um with the chinooks usually it goes the other way though like from minus 20 to above zero in a couple hours so um that's really all we've been up to. We played some video games, we chilled out in front of the fire, got our Christmas tree. We did actually go see Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. That is such a freaking amazing show. I was so happy with it. I'm actually, in some ways, I enjoyed that more than a lot of the other Harry Potter movies, probably because it was new. I really, really enjoyed the Harry Potter movies. Um, but I also, I really enjoyed Fantastic Beasts for a completely different reason. Um, given that like it's an it's in the universe and I think that's really cool so uh, and then we did also go see Moana on Monday and I really enjoyed that one too um, we weren't too big of fans of Frozen we really liked Wreck-It Ralph our favorite princess movie before that was Tangled I know Moana is not a princess she's more of a heroine and I really enjoyed that um, Moana was actually what I was expecting out of Brave with how they advertised Brave, I was expecting a quest story or a heroine as a hero, basically, like in the hero slot. Um, and granted, I'm not trying to pigeonhole them, but that's what I was expecting from their advertising. It was a quest. Um, and it didn't really do it, but I found that Moana was perfect. It's exactly what I wanted to see in a movie for girls. And, but also, just the quest story of like that's what we need to see sometimes um anyway i really enjoyed it i was really bright and happy in some ways in and then in unexpected places i really liked how she did follow the very traditional ancient hero arc um i'm sure if you've studied literature or greek literature uh you will recognize i'm not going to spoil it here but it did follow that very specific arc as well, which is awesome, to make her a traditional hero or heroine. Um, and they followed that, so that was really cool. 
Uh, that brings me actually to shop chatter. So if you guys don't want to hear that, I will talk to you in a week or a bit. Um, there might be some stuff interrupting recording next Wednesday. I'm not 100% sure, but I will record some at some point next week. I promise. <laughs> it might be Tuesday. It might be Thursday. It's not going to be Tuesday. It might be Thursday. Monday or Thursday. There we go. Um, so yeah, shop news. Um, the club is live. So to give you a rundown of the club, what the club is that I'm doing is it is a collaboration between myself and Ancient Arts Yarns. It's um, two options. You can do a three shipment installment or you can do a one shipment installment. Um, the three shipment installment will be over six months. It's going to run from, it's going to ship beginning of February, beginning of April, and beginning of June. One shipment installment will ship at the beginning of February. That's the first one that you're signing up for. Um, what it is, is it's going to be a bag as well as a yarn dyed to match the bag. Both the fabric and the yarn are exclusive to the club. You cannot get it anywhere else. Um, and once club signups are done, they're done. <laughs> uh, they, it's a very limited quantity of bags that will be available because I have purchased the fabric. Uh, the really cool thing about this fabric is it did actually come one, like, I have three different fabrics, obviously, three different shipments, and each fabric came from a different city. So the first fabric came from Osaka, uh, the second fabric came from Kyoto, and then the third fabric came from Tokyo. So it's across Japan, well, Kansai and Kanto region. And then the goodies actually came from different cities as well. One goodie came from Osaka, one goodie came from Kyoto, and one goodie came from Nara. Uh, if you're watching Instagram, I posted a picture of the bag that was used for the goodies from Nara. Um, the bag was actually attacked about five minutes after I bought the goodies in Nara by one of the Nara deer. Uh, right in front of a taxi, of course. <laughs> Thankfully, the taxi helped me. He like The deer actually got the bag and tore it, and everything spilled out on the ground, of course, it was a, as I was trying to cross the road. And um, yes, but anyway, they came from Nara. The Nara deer may not approve, but hey, you can get a deer attacked goodie, potentially. Um, so yeah, so there's goodies from Nara, Kyoto, and Osaka. There's fabric from Osaka, Kyoto, and Tokyo. And then there's going to be a pattern, a skein of yarn, a uh, progress keeper. Yes, and that's all I've promised. <laughs> uh, just making sure that I've got it all straight in my head. Um, the pattern will not be exclusive to the club, nor will be the progress keeper, but the, but the fabric and the yarn will be. So if you want it, definitely sign up. Um, there are benefits to signing up to the three-month club, although you're more than welcome to sign up to the one-month club. Uh, the benefits for the three-month club is it is actually a little bit cheaper uh, because it's a guaranteed number for me, uh, as well as the shipping has been reduced on that as well. You actually only pay basically for one month shipping instead of three months shipping, just so you know. Um, the signups are open till January 15th, 2017. What ends up happening is that's the closing date for the three month shipment. And then you end up with um, being able to sign up for the one month shipments. Basically how it's gonna work is three month shipment, or three installment shipment closes January 15th and it will ship February, like beginning of February, beginning of April, beginning of June. Uh, one month, like our one shipment ones will be shipping um, same schedule but the signups will open the beginning of February and the beginning of April. So that, right? Yes, and then they'll close the 15th of each following month. So we'll run, basically, I close January 15th, ship out the first week of February. The signups for the one installment shipment will ship, or will open up like February 1st and close March 15th to ship April. And then rinse and repeat. Um, the shipments, the third one will open April 1st, close May 15th to ship the first week of June. Yes. That's right. Yeah, okay. Um, I 
have it written down, but then I realized that I actually wrote it down yet. Wrong. Um, and rest of, the rest of the information is listed on nekuzukinets.com, so definitely go take a look at that too. Uh, let's see. Not much else right now besides the club. I'm super excited about this club, guys. I really hope that you get that you enjoy it. Um, it is limit, like I said, it's very limited. Uh, you do have a choice if you want a small wedge bag or if you want a box bag, and then you do also have a choice of your yarn, which is either um... oh, what is it? It's their DK weight or their um, fingering weight, and it's both listed on there too. I think it's there. It's listed there. I'm sorry, I don't remember that right off the top of my head, but there are two choices in the yarn. Yarn base information is there. You've probably seen it on my podcast because I chose two of my favorite bases anyway, and um, they're both really fun. So I'm excited about it. I'm really excited to be able to send you guys like a bag and a yarn and all the goodies too because uh, it was a lot of fun for, to shop for the goodies in Japan too. Um, and I'm hoping that you really like it. There, there is some news coming up for the shop, but it's not quite time to announce it yet. Um, it's stuff that will affect the beginning of 2017 and the very end of 2016. And so basically what I'll do is I will tell you about that when it comes closer. Uh, I know that's so teasery and mean, but uh, it's, it's not the right time to announce it right now. Um, a little bit too soon. Two more weeks and you can hear. <laughs> so. If you guys have any questions, you can contact me on all my social media. I'm there as Nekuzuki Knits. And you can join the Ravelry group where the show notes will be. The show notes will also be on nekuzukinits.com if you want to keep up with me there. The other way to keep up with the actual shop part of Nekuzuki Knits is to sign up for the newsletter at, uh, la, 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 on nekuzukinits.com where I'll be sending out a monthly newsletter that's very business oriented instead of all of this chatter around the business as well so thanks so much and i will chat with you all in a week bye